So um, I want to talk to you about um, a stealth marketing tool that I believe that every business needs to have as part of their marketing mix. And I'll go over a lot of the reasons why. I'll show you what this thing looks like, why it's so great, um, and um, and and how and how you can put one of these into your business. I'm going to tell you something. This is not some newfangled social media internet BS thing. This is tried and true gonna work it worked 50 years ago and it's gonna work 50 years from now all right so if you're looking for something really sexy and exciting sorry this ain't it sorry but you're gonna like it because it's good it works you know why go for all that you know all that woo wooey stuff when we got stuff that's solid proven that works let's use that stuff right as entrepreneurs we're always looking for that next bright shiny object right we're looking for that what's next what's magical in all of the years I've done this you know I've been on my own as an entrepreneur since I was 23 years old and I'm a lot older than that now it's been more than 25 years and I'll tell you I haven't found any magic, no magic in all of this time. So uh, anyway, so let's go. Let's talk. So I think we can all agree that marketing lead generation is getting more expensive. Every year it's getting more expensive. You know, their survey, Yoho does a big survey every year, and we, we uh, the data I think is, is, is spot on. Um, the um, latest data on lead cost, lead cost, issued lead cost is over $375. I believe the exact number is $377, and it's up from $327 the year before, something like that. You know, So next year, what is it going to be? It's going to be over $400 for sure. You know, So marketing and lead generation is getting more expensive. Competition is fierce, especially now. You know, competition is fierce, especially when the environment, the business environment, is good. And the business environment right now, the last couple of years, has been really, really good. You know, credit's relaxed a little bit. People are making more money. People are more confident. So they're spending more money. But what that also does is it brings in a lot of new companies, new businesses into the mix, but it also takes some of you know the older companies that have been established that are making more money. Now they can pump more out into the marketplace. They're growing. They can expand, right? So competition is fierce right now. Consumers, consumers have more options now than they ever had. Not only with you and me, but also with product selection and how they buy, right? They have more options than ever before. Now, also, how leads are generated and how they are deciding on who to call, that's changed also. They have more options there too. Before, um, I was talking with somebody the other day about um, PPC, pay-per-click, Google pay-per-click. I would refer to client to um, a guy that I know that is a master at pay-per-click, Google pay-per-click. And we were talking, him and I were talking a little bit about it, and he said something really interesting. Before, with pay-per-click, it was you would place your ad, somebody would click on the ad, they would go to your website. Now, if you had your site set up properly, you sent them to the right kind of landing page, the messages matched, there was a decent offer there, and there was a decent... Um, lead capture form, you would get a lead, right? Today, what people are doing is 
before they're giving you their information, they may land on your page, they see the name of your company, but then what are they doing? They're doing another Google search. They're taking, now they're taking your name and they're putting it in and they're putting reviews behind it, right? Because they want to see, they want to see what other people have to say about you, right? So lots of options and things have changed a little bit in terms of how they are finding you and how they are becoming leads. Now also, this also leads to a lot of distraction. Consumers are more distracted than ever before. You know, it's getting hard. I hear from a lot of clients that it's harder and harder to get to the kitchen table. It's harder and harder to get both parties together. It's harder and harder to keep them engaged for however long you're going to keep them engaged for. Some people do it for an hour. Some people are in the house for four hours, right? If you're in the house for four hours right now, um, you know, you got to be there for a while and you got to be there. I'm not one to tell you you know cut it down but that if you're in the house for four hours um, and you're selling replacements let's say or you're selling plumbing or HVAC you're doing something really wrong if you're a designer and you're in there for kitchens and bathrooms and it's all custom work that's a whole nother story but if you're in there for roofing windows siding one day bath um, and you're in there for anything more than you know two two and a half hours you know um, you really got to look at that. So um, more and more, um, because of all of this um, going on, we need to have tools that we can use in our marketing, right? That's going to make our marketing uh, more effective, more profitable, right? It's going to go to the right people. Our marketing is going to go to the right people. It's going to ideally stay away from the competition. Now, if you saw the email that I sent about this webinar, I said about, uh, I started off by talking about imitation um, is supposed to be like the sincerest form of flattery, right? Well, but in, in, um, when you're doing advertising, when you're doing lead generation, and you've got competition out there, you're showing them what you're doing, right? So somebody like, somebody like, let's say Brian Elias at 1-800-Hanson's, my good friend, when he's on TV every day, and every day, you, all of his competition, now he doesn't care, right? He doesn't care, but every day his competition knows what his offers are. So whether it's an installation offer, it's a money off offer, it's a percent off offer, it's a plus offer, you know, you're going to get this plus that, whatever the offer is, it's out there for everybody to see. So when the competition sees what you're doing, they could now develop strategies to sell against you, right? Or, you know, if they're just flat out dumb and lazy and, you know, don't know any better, they could just copy your, your um, offer, right? So whatever you put in as your, as your headline, as your offer, really, they can just copy it, right? Which then dilutes some of what you're doing, dilutes some of your effectiveness, right? So that's why I call this a stealth marketing strategy. As much stealth as we could get in to um, our marketing mix, the better it is for us. What's stealth? Stealth is quiet. Stealth is under the radar, right? It's away from my competition's eyes, right? It's away from their ability to take that information and use it against me right so why do we need this tool now this slide I admit you know it's you know I break every PowerPoint presentation rule with this slide I just noticed it right now too by the way because I was furiously like putting the information in there because I want to give you as much you know to chew on and to think about as possible so forgive this slide just kind of listen to to what I'm saying don't get caught up in all of the all the letters and all the words but, you know, advertising, we've already established, 
lead generation is it, it's not getting any cheaper and it's really not going to get any easier either right i mean it just never does it's always it's going to get a little more expensive and the degree of difficulty in a lot of cases is going to go up you know marginally i think right now it's more on the expensive side than on the hard you know uh, the hard side i think most all of you most of my clients um, I think uh, it leads not your biggest problem right now. Getting them closed is probably a bigger issue, and even now getting them installed is is a bigger issue. Competition, competition's not going away, not going to happen. The only time, by the way, you know, when competition is going to go away, I'll tell you when they're going to go away is when the economy turns and it's going to it's going to at some point I'm not telling you it's gonna to happen tomorrow I'm not telling you it's gonna happen next month and I'm not telling you it's gonna happen next year but it's going to happen I don't know exactly when but we know it's going to happen and that's when a lot of them are going to through natural selection are going to go away but that does not mean that any of us can count on that for our good we must be strategic about that. Now, that's a little bit of a separate conversation, although this tool helps you with that, um, um, which kind of gets into the next point, which is to really have long-term staying power and build real wealth in this business. We must establish relationship with our customers. You've got to have a sticky relationship with your customer. Look, if you're spending $375, let's just do the math, okay? And you do the math for your business. I mean, yours might be 150, 200. I know in the bath business right now, you know, leads are, you know, for some companies are under $200 a lead, which is great. But I know in the window business, leads are up in four or $500 range. Okay, so it's kind of all across the board. So you do the math for yourself. But if I use 375 as the number, right? How many of those issued leads do we need in order to make a sale, okay? So it's probably three and a half is the right number, right? So let me get out, I'll get out my trusty calculator here and I'll say 375 times 3.5 equals $1,312.50 to buy a customer. Think about that, to buy a customer, $1,312.50 to buy a customer. Again, you do your own math. Okay, your math could be 500, it could be 800, it could be 2,000, whatever it is. That is your number, right? So, what are you doing to make sure that not only do you get this sale from them, but how do you get the next sale and the next sale and the referral and the referral, right? That is what is, is going to it's going to do a lot of things for you. A, it will build staying power in the business. Look at every business that didn't make it through the 2007, 2008, 2009. The people that did not make it are the ones that just were taking orders, had zero relationship with customers. Those were the ones that went away. It's just how it is. I, I, my, our number one client who's still with us today, started with us in June of 2009, still with us today. I love him. One of the smartest people in the home improvement business. His business went from 15 million to in half, right? Like this, what kept him going, what kept him alive when 80% of his competition went away was his relationship with his customers. That's what kept him going. That's what kept him alive. Right? And all of those strategies and all of those tactics and all of those tools that he used back then, he's still using today, right? Because he knows this is all great right now, but at some point, you know, things will change. So we must establish relationship with our customers and we must stay sticky with our customers. I have clients that do an amazing job at this. You know, there's some that come to mind, but just amazing, amazing job at this. We must do everything we can to prevent our customer from going to the competition. One of the worst phone calls that you can make or get is, or interaction you can have with a customer is, hey, wow, 
Look at your new windows. Yeah, aren't they great? But, Mr. Customer, we do windows. <gasps> I didn't know that. I didn't know you guys do windows. Oh, man, I wish I knew. Happens all the time. You know, I'd say it all the time. I'm not really a betting man, but for a lot of your company, a lot of you guys, I would be willing to bet I could make 100 phone calls in your business and I will find a bunch of people that had a, um, that paid somebody else, one of your competition, to do something that you could have done for them. And you know it too. It's just, you know, that's how it is. That's how business is, right? And so we've got to do everything we can to prevent that from happening. That's part of maximizing the value of each and every customer. Now, our customers will forget about us. Left them to their own devices, they will forget about us. They got other things to do. They have families, they have jobs, they have businesses, they have a life, right? It's not their job to remember us. It's our job to make sure they remember us, that they know uh, the solutions we provide. They know how to get a hold of us, right? That's our job, not theirs. Our job, not theirs. Should I say it one more time? I won't, <laughs> right? But you get it. They will forget about us. So our job is to stay top of mind, is to stay relevant, to stay in front of them so that when the opportunity comes up for them to either give us more money or to recommend us to somebody else, we are there top of mind with them. Again, part of the reason why companies don't get more business from their existing customers is simply because their customers uh, they're out of sight, out of mind with their customers, plain and simple, right? So what do we do to stay top of mind with our best customers? The other thing that this tool will do for you is we want to be able to give our sales people what I call an unfair advantage, an unfair advantage. An unfair advantage is this, very simply, if I am going out to a referral as a salesperson. How much better are my chances of closing that deal if you referred them to me? Right? They are 50% better, 60% better. Right? That is giving your salesperson an unfair advantage. What about your salesperson going back to a previous customer? Right? Now look. I run an internet lead or a show lead or a TV lead, right? If I had enough, if I had a choice, right? Or a repeat customer or a referral, which one do I want? As a, which one do you want? You want the repeat customer? Repeat customer was this one, the referral, right? That's the one you want. Why? Why? Because you know there's going to be less price resistance, and you've got a much better shot at closing the deal. So we need to give our salespeople an unfair advantage. You need to give yourself, as the owner of the business, an unfair advantage over your competition. And then again, everything I've been talking about here on this page is we must do everything we can to maximize the overall lifetime profit value of each and every customer. Again, if it's costing $1,300 or $800 or whatever, Ever the amount is to buy that customer doesn't it just make sense to get as much money as we can as much opportunity as we can out of that customer as possible of course it does of course it does right and if we don't do it and if we don't do it then we are just not our business is just not gonna live up to its potential it's not going to happen. Now, this tool, we have been using ourselves. We first started to use it ourselves. And we also use it for clients. Lots of clients, lots of very smart clients are using this tool in their businesses to grow. 
okay, to, to do all of the things that I talked about on this slide. Okay? Now, before we get into specifically what this tool is, I want to do a little refresher with you guys on what it takes to create successful lead generation. Now, maybe you've seen me do this before, but it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt me either to keep going over it and over it again because it reminds me as well. Now, I didn't make this up. I got this out of a book called The Ultimate Marketing Plan. My mentor, Dan Kennedy, uh, one of his books it is an awesome book. And in that book, he talks about this triangle, the market message media uh, triangle. Right? So what creates successful advertising is the degree to which you get all three of these things right in your marketing in your or your advertising. So it starts with who. Who are you targeting? The more specific you can get about who you are targeting, right? the more you're going to understand what their problems are, how to talk with them, creating the message, creating the offers, creating the solutions, and you're going to know where they are, where they live, right? Because, you know, I, I see a lot of company, one of the biggest mistakes that we all make with advertising is we send our advertising out to everybody, and we think that everybody is a prospect. Everybody is not a prospect. But let's think about, just real quick, who is the home improvement a customer right now. Obviously, they're homeowners, right? What is their age group? I think probably the peak, kind of the peak, is my age, 49, to early 60s, I think, is probably that is your, right now, that is the sweet spot for home improvement customers. Are they more educated or less educated? Probably a little more educated. Are they a little more affluent or a little less affluent? A little more, right? Do they live in certain areas and neighborhoods in your part of the world? Of course they do. Here in Miami, I know where they are, right? And it wouldn't take me long to figure out with demographics and charts of where the ideal customers live, right? Where our ideal customers would live, right? You can do the same. Now, one of the other things that you can do, by the way, with this is you take all of your past customers and you map them. That's an advanced strategy, but that's something that we do to help identify the who. But the who of our customer. So they're a little older, a little more affluent, right? They remember, by the way, they remember life before the internet. Like maybe a lot, probably a lot of you, you probably remember life before the internet. I certainly do. I certainly do. I don't even, one of the things, I don't know if you guys are like this too, it's just as an aside, but when I first started in business, it was 23, 24, I didn't have a computer on my desk. I had a phone and I had like files and that was it. And I built a business. I didn't have this thing. I didn't have this big ass computer thing with the mouse and the, and the keyboard and the internet and all of this stuff. Anyway, how did we do business before? We, we did, you know? Anyway, so market, <laughs> the who, right? Um, I don't want these messages coming through. I thought I turned it off. Okay. Um, so message. So once we've got our market identified, then we want to come up with the message. What is the message that's going to get our market to respond to our solution, to our, um, to our proposal, right? So what is that message? And the message comes through in a number of different ways. It's the ad that you put together. It's the headline that you put, the benefits that you've got in there, the offer that you have in there, really important. So that's the messaging that you put together, the market, the message, and then there's the media. How are you getting it to them? So are you getting it 
through shows and events? Are you getting it on the internet? Are you getting it through newspaper? Are you getting it through TV, radio, whatever? That's the media. By the way, the internet is just another media. It's a lot more sophisticated than a newspaper uh, is. It's a lot more sophisticated than a magazine is, but it's just a media, okay? And you have to treat it as such. You have to treat it as such, and you have to give it the same uh, types of, of uh, controls that you would on any other media. You have to give it the same type of, of um, uh, tests as you would any other media. Okay, So this is how you create successful advertising. Now, in most cases, in most cases, with most of the advertising that you do, that we do, we don't always have a lot of control over these three things. So, for example, if I'm doing a magazine or a newspaper or TV, market, market, I just have to rely on this TV station gets the biggest number of viewership of my type of market and they watch these types of shows. Okay, so they might watch Dr. Phil. So I'm going to load up on Dr. Phil. They might watch the news, the morning news. I'm going to load up my uh, ads there on the morning news, but we don't have complete control over that. What about messaging? Now messaging, you've got more control over messaging, right? But sometimes they will tell you what you can and cannot do, sometimes. But also with messaging, you don't know who else is going to see your messaging. This is where it comes back to, you know, the competition and all of that. And then the media, the media itself, you don't own it. You don't own it. It's somebody else's media and it can go away tomorrow. Go away. How many businesses relied on one form of advertising, right, to grow their businesses, to build their businesses, and that one form of advertising went away? There's lists of them. Right? The carcasses are everywhere. Okay, So with this stuff, you really have to fight to have control. Right? When you're thrown into a media like this, and I just took a snapshot out of a, a magazine called The Home Mag, but look at this. I can see the offers. You know, there's offers here. Um, look at this benefit one to two week delivery I see pricing here look at this free if I go with cabinet depot I can get free crown molding and a sink with new cabinets and countertops I can get 600 bucks off uh, refacing free accent I mean everything is right there I see all of it all of this intelligence right so as far as messaging goes your messaging is out there and you don't have a lot, whole lot of control over who's going to see that and who might use that against you, right? But let me ask you, what if there was a way that you could control all three elements, where you could control who is getting your advertising, the messaging that is going, complete control over it, and it's yours. Nobody else can see it, only the people that you want to see it. And what if you owned the media, meaning it can never, ever be taken away from you? That'd be pretty good, right? Well, everybody needs to have something like this as part of their marketing mix. For some companies, it's a big part of their marketing mix. For other companies, it's a small part of their marketing mix. Regardless, the message here is it needs to be part of your marketing mix, right? Now, who wants to know what this tool is? Now, if you haven't guessed it already, right? It's this. It's the company newsletter. The company newsletter, right? Now, there was a time when people loved to get mail. They loved something to show up, and they could touch it and feel it. I am like that, by the way. I'm 49 years old. I prefer mail, hard mail, hard books, look at all this, right? Hard books over um, PDFs, eBooks, 
Now, I just started, um, not just started, but I've started using a Kindle, right? I could say I've, but I still prefer, I have like maybe seven or eight Kindle books. I mean, look at how many, how many regular real books I have, okay? You know, so I'm big on that. I like to get real, like, catalogs. You know, I like real mail. I want to see stuff. I don't, I don't always, I'll look at it online, but I like to see it. I like to get um, magazines, like real magazines. Um, I get, I don't have it here. It's out there. But I have been a subscriber to Dan Kennedy's newsletter for 20 one year since 1996 21 years physical in an envelope with a stamp i read it every single month and not just one newsletter i get like one two three there's four of his newsletters that i get a month right newsletters get looked at they get opened um your demographic think about your demographic they still like mail. In fact, you can go, go I was going to go do, I was going to go do this, I didn't have time. But if you go and you do a search for how your customers prefer to have you communicate with them. And we actually even surveyed our our customers once. Overwhelmingly, they will want you to communicate with them via direct mail. Mail, okay? Believe it or not. Um, now, 10 years ago, 12 years ago or so, this started happening with the mailbox. It started to get flooded with stuff. It's starting to happen again. It's starting to happen again, but not to the degree that it was happening before, right? So the thing here is that um, there is less competition in the mailbox than there are in other places. There's a lot less competition, by the way. Think about this. There's a lot less competition in the mailbox, the physical mailbox, than there is in the email inbox. Think about the email inbox, how quickly people can just delete, delete, delete. Now, look, I use a ton. We do, we do a lot of email marketing, too, a ton of email marketing, right? But I would never, under any circumstances, give up mail for only email. There's a bunch of companies out there right now that are promoting, oh, you only need email. It's been going on for years. Oh, it's free. It's cheap. It's this. It's that. Exactly. I mean, that's the results that you're going to get, free and cheap, right? It's it's a good as a uh, enhancement um, to go with it, you know, together um, to complement each other, but not by itself as a standalone, right? Now, another thing started to happen was we started to get this thing, like I said, email, right? And now it looks like this, right? And so we're so, um, we've got so much going on in the email inbox and, and all of the other distractions on the phone that we can't only rely on this as a media to get us what we want, to get us to, you know, uh, communicate with our clients, to stay sticky with our clients, to get our customers to bring us uh, more money, right? So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we integrate the old strategies with the new strategies. We want to make sure that we use stuff that's proven to work over and over and over and over again, right? It's proven to work. Um, and so the reason I love this tool so much is because there's, you know, it's, you control everything. You decide who is going to get it. You decide 
the messaging you're going to put inside of it. You you own that media, and it's under the radar. Your competition doesn't know what the hell you're doing, right? Because it's only going to your customers. Now, some of the reasons why you want a company newsletter, you want more repeat sales. You want to increase the number of times that people do business with you. You want to increase your referrals. You want to get more referrals, stay in front of your customers. People ask us all the time, they think that there's some magical solution to referrals. There isn't. I'm sorry. You've got to provide an amazing customer experience. Amazing. Wow. You've got to give them the confidence to go out and tell other people about you. Okay, you do that, but then stay in touch with people. Keep reminding them of who you are because they're going to forget about you. You want to get more referrals? Stay in touch with your customers. Otherwise, forget it. There's no magic, you know, internet solution for it. It's not it, right? I know we've been doing this for, you know, we do it for, for clients now, but we did all this stuff for ourselves too. You introduce your new products and services. I know over the last few years, a lot of you have added new product extensions. You may have added roofing. You may have added windows. You may have added one-day baths. A lot of you have added one-day baths. Well, had you been staying in touch with your customers, now you can go back to them and let them know, hey, remember us? Hey, guess what? Remember you liked us. You trust us. We did a great job for you. Guess what? Now we've got this amazing, cool new product. And because you're a customer of ours, here's a special offer just for you. By the way, I started a business, an entire business, with that strategy. I went from my bath remodeling business, right? I stayed in touch with those customers, and I used that business to launch my next home improvement business. And it worked amazingly well. Right? I went to them and I said, hey, we just started this other company and give us a try. Here you go. And for three months, that's who we did work for and that's how we, that's how we started that business and that's how we got off to a start. By controlling the messaging and what you're sending to them, you're building relationship with them. If you do it right, you build relationship with your customer. Right? They, you show up on a regular basis. You say nice things to them right? You give them value. That's how you're going to build a relationship. Keep them away from your competition, stay top of mind, and again, it's mail. It's mail. It's going in their mailbox. It has staying power. An email is gone instantly, right? A Google search is gone instantly. Not so with a customer newsletter. Mail has to be touched, right? It's got tangible value. They have to go to their mailbox and take it out and look at it, right? This is what shows up, right? This is on top of or in their mail pile, right? They're going to look at this. They have to touch it, right? They have to touch it, right? And again, think about who your customer is. Are they the millennial? Are they in the 20s that are just all over their phones? You know, everything is about their phones, right? Or is it an older group that still likes to touch and feel and get physical mail, right? Look at your customers, and I'd be willing to bet you, again, I'm not much of a betting man, but I'm willing to bet you that they are in the older age group, right? They remember before the internet, life before the internet, okay? So again, you know, let your, let the millennials and be all over the social media stuff. And look, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't do that stuff. I would never say that. Do it. But don't put everything into that. Stay with your customer. Stay sticky with your customer. So advertising, why advertising fails, why it's, it doesn't work, because one of those three things is getting messed up, right? You're going to the wrong people with the wrong message with the wrong media. 
the degree to which you get those wrong or right are going to determine your results. I can have, I give this example, I won't bore you with it today, but I can have the most amazing offer delivered via FedEx right to the doorstep. People have to sign for it. If I deliver it to the wrong people, the offer doesn't matter. None of it matters because we went to the wrong people. Conversely, I can go to the right people, which a lot of people do, by the way. If you look in magazines and, uh, 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 you know, I'm not going to say you guys on, but a lot of your, you know, people in the home improvement industry put out an ad that's in the right media, that goes to the right market, and their message is what? It's their logo on the top of the page, and it says, we are a great company. We believe in this. We believe in that phone number, little phone number at the bottom. No one's going to respond to that. What's in it for me, right? Terrible message. Right market, right media, terrible message. And then they wonder why it doesn't work. That's why it doesn't work, right? And finally, again, with your own company newsletter, you own the media. You own it, right? You own it. And you control the market. You control who it's being delivered to. See that name right there? I'm not going to show you who it is, but see that name right there? You own that. That's you, right? Messaging. You control the message. What goes inside is controlled by you, okay? So all three of those things, market, message, media, you know, if there was a little bell, ding, 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 they're all lined up. They're all matching, okay? So I use newsletters because I want to protect my customers. I want to protect my relationship. I want to enhance my relationship. I want to keep them away from my competition, right? Protect, defend. These are important words. This is how you need to be thinking also about your customers. I mean, look, listen. Do what you want with your business, okay? But you will hear me say this over and over and over again from my own personal experience and from my work with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of companies like yours. You know, my perspective is a little bit different, right? I have a wider view, and I will tell you, you know, people that protect, defend their customers with their lives, that develop relationship with their, with their customers, those are the companies that make it and build real wealth, okay? And you can do it through systems and process. That's a whole nother com conversation, right? But at the level that most of you are at, at least the names that I see that are familiar, right, on this, this is something like this is your ticket to long-term sustainability and success in this business. It's all about your customer. Okay. Now, I'll show you the Happy Home Gazette. So we do a quarterly print newsletter. We also do a monthly email newsletter as well, both called the Happy Home Gazette. We do unique, you know, 16 unique newsletters a year. Now, for some of you, actually for those of you on the call that are clients or on the training that are clients, I mean, we're already doing this for you, right? But for those of you that aren't, I'm going to show you what we do. And I'm not worried about that. None of my clients that are on here should be worried about that either because most people won't be able to, I can show you everything. I can show you exactly how we do it. And most people won't be able to go out and duplicate it. I mean, that's just, that's just how it is. Just human nature. Okay. But you can try. You know, and I want to show you everything. And if you want to be able to go out and do this and put the time and the effort and the energy into it, by all means, please go and do it. Okay? If you want us to do it for you, you'll have that option here at the end as well. But again, as with everything I do, I use what we're doing to be instructive. Right? I use what we do to be instructive. Now, we do four issues a year of our print newsletter, and we do 12 monthly email newsletters, all right? We do January, April, July, and October. Now, we have one coming up 
um, in October where it's actually being prepared for our clients right now. Um, our company newsletter looks looks like this. This is one of our um, this is our uh, winter issue, which was the January issue of this year. Um, our newsletter follows a proven format. Proven format. Now look, I didn't make this up. I am a student. I learn, I study, I implement, I test, and when it works, I keep doing it. And I learned this format 15 years ago. All right, and we've just improved on it since. All right, so let me give you an idea. These, uh, well, I'll show you the winter issue, but they all kind of follow the same, the same kind of format. If you look here on my list, there's your message. So there's always a message here from the owner. By the way, all of the newsletters that we do are completely customized. So when you create your own, if you're going to go create your own, your own newsletter, you're all, you, it's branded. It's branded with you. And by the way, real quick, let's have a quick conversation about branding because I'm not about branding on the front end. I think branding only becomes a byproduct of what you do after you get that customer to call you. Branding is everything you do after that. If you try and do branding up front, you're going to go broke. You don't have the time or the money to use branding up front to try and get leads. Up at the beginning, what you need is you need to create you need to create leads, right? When you get that lead, that's when the branding starts. And to carry your branding through, you use something, you, you, you everything that you do in your company, from your trucks to your shirts, to your paperwork, to your brochures and all of that, that's your branding after the, and then when the job is done, how you stay in touch with those customers after is, is branding as well. And so, you know, so here we've got, you know, we've got um, the message from the owner. We've got in this issue, we put a funny comic, you know, right there on the front. By the way, the Happy Home Gazette, this is all copyrighted and, you know, so don't copy it because, you know, we'll come after you. It's trademark. But it's inspiring news for a happy and healthy home. That's our tagline. Inspiring news. Because why? You have to deliver inspiring news to your customers because if they watch CNN, they watch Fox, they watch MSNBC, they watch the nightly news, it's all doom and gloom, right? It's all doom and gloom, right? The world's falling apart, you know? Like, you know, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate, but we've had two major hurricanes. We've got one going on right now. We've had two major earthquakes. This is what's in people's heads. You have to be the deliverer of inspiration. You have to deliver to them inspiring news if you want to be um, if you want to be in business for a long time, right? When you open up the newsletter, and I'll show you the 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 issue that's coming up, but you'll see we've got a recipe here, fun fact. We've got um, we put a quote. You know the quote is here on the front. There's a home improvement article a. And it's usually a home maintenance checklist. We don't want to write about windows. We don't want to write about roofing. And people don't care about that. They will throw this away. Remember, the idea here with this is to get your customer engaged with you every three months or every month. I have clients that do this every single month that send a physical newsletter every single month, and it works like gangbusters. But um, they get engaged with you every, you know, on a regular basis, right? We put a family-oriented article in there. Now, there's always an offer. So, look, this is not going out without an offer. There's always our referral rewards program on the back. By the way, um, all of our clients, the, all the clients that we work with, have, use our referral rewards program. We do contests, you know, because we want to keep people always engaged. We always want to have an excuse and a reason to tell people about our referral program. Right about referrals, about how we appreciate referrals and how we're a referable company and all of that stuff. All right. So that's kind of the format. That's what that's what a successful newsletter 
looks like. By the way, one of the other things that we've been doing with this, let me show you a sample of one here, is we've been doing an insert into the newsletter. So you've got your packaging right here, which is, by the way, I mean, newsletters are friendly. It's a very friendly format. It doesn't come off as salesy, it does, you know, if it's done right, if it's done right. But then inside, we've got an insert that sells. You know, here's our offers for the month. In this case, there's a, this is a plumber, so they've got, you know, they've got this thing. What is this thing? I always forget what this is. I don't know. But in his market, this is a big thing, right? They do a lot of this, so it's right here. We're selling, selling, right? Don't think that a newsletter, don't think that a newsletter is, is a, 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 a passive thing that we're doing and that it's just about that it's just about um, um, just you know only staying in touch. No, it's also meant to provide return on investment. By the way, for those of you with uh, phone rooms, uh, call center, whatever you want to call it, somebody called it. Um, oh, I love it. We have a new client, communication center, something like that. Love it. When you call after this newsletter goes out, your results will go up three to five times. Every time. Phone call does. It's awesome. Now, if you, if you, so look, I've shown you what you need to do with this thing. I, I hope that I've made a case for why you need a company newsletter. Um, you can work with us. You could do it on your own. It doesn't matter to me. Obviously, you know, for some of you, I'd love for you to work with us. But even if you don't, that's fine. Just do it because it's it's what you need for your business it's what you need for your business to stay in touch with your customers remember all of these reasons I gave you back here right advertising is not getting any cheaper competition is not going away to really have long-term staying power in this business you must build real uh, relationship with your customers you must prevent your customers from going to your competition you've got to stay top of mind with your competition by using this, you give your cut in every situation that you can, you want to give your salespeople an unfair advantage. This will help you do that. And then you've got to maximize the value of every single customer, the lifetime value of every single customer. Now, we have our fall issue that is we're preparing, madly preparing for all of our clients. Um, this goes out mid-October. Um, the um, it looks like this um, we've got you know the message here by the way all of that our clients don't have to do anything nothing if you are our client um, you can ask any of them they don't do anything we do all of this we write it we design it we do the lists we 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 lick the stamps we do all of it they don't have to touch anything they get their newsletter when their customers get their newsletter all right um, but you'll see, you know, we have fun stuff here. We have a great inspiring quote. We have a funny comic. Um, on the back, uh, this is the mailing panel. We do a movie trivia contest. This is just a way to get people to go inside. We have the referral rewards program where we give something cool away. This season, we're doing the Nintendo Switch, which just, uh, you know, we look for stuff that is what is hot and trending right now. And the Nintendo Switch is right now, it's what's hot and trending. Um, this is going to go out in mid-October. The contest uh, drawing date is December 1st. So what we're doing is we're, you know, everything is about driving to, hey, referrals, referrals, referrals until December 1st. And then in January, we start the whole process over again. All right. So four times a year, it gives us the opportunity to go out and talk to our customers, our referral sources, um, our demo no sales um, about you know about who we are what we do again recipe family article uh, movie trivia contest um, technology article um, we this is how we do it we want to keep people engaged with us every quarter 
every few months we want to show up in a friendly format um, and uh, this is the way to do it now again I think this needs to be part of every company's marketing mix small part you know for some companies it's a big part I mean look I I have clients I can think of five off the top of my head right now that have I have um, taken a lot of their marketing budgets and slowly kind of moved more and more of their marketing budgets to the relationship they have with their customers because that's what is working for them now does that work with everybody no you know not everybody is going to be able to get 50 60 70 percent of their business from repeat customers and referrals but if you're not getting at least 30 35 percent you're in trouble I'm sorry you're in trouble. I talk to companies all the time that are at 5%, 10%, and they just can't see their way through to doing something like this to get that number up because you're at risk. You only got 5% of people that are willing to refer you and send you business. When the thing turns, you're in trouble. That's where that's why uh, so many companies and you know, eight, nine, ten just disappeared and they never came back and they never will right don't let that happen to you so um, the uh, October issue closes uh, September 30th um, if you are interested we would love to talk with you I'm gonna put this up right now I'm gonna put a poll up right now um, who is interested you know if anybody's interested in a strategy session where we can talk about your business um, look at what you're doing right now um, we go through a process called the opportunity map where we um, look at eight key areas of your business we ask you questions about those eight key areas of your business and it's the opportunity map we look for where is the opportunity in your business for more profit and more wealth and then we'll come back to you with a um, with a um, what you want to call it a plan a custom plan there's no obligation for this by the way no obligation just get the information from us and you can do with it what you want either you know Take the information, implement it yourself. I mean, the reason we do this, quite frankly, is because some people that do a strategy session will want us to do all of it for them. Um, if you do, you do. If you don't, you don't. We're not, you know, there's no hard sell here. There's nothing to, you know, there may be nothing to buy. We might not even be able to help you. But I'm going to leave this open um, for a few more uh, seconds here. Um, Come on, about half of you have hit one of the buttons. Um, just hit one of those real quick. Which one? Yes, please book my strategy session. We'll contact you right after, uh, right after the webinar and uh, get you booked. Um, not sure? Please call me. We'll call. Maybe we'll be happy to send you some more information. Or no. Tell us no. No problem. No doesn't bother me. You're not hurting my feelings. I just hope that you've gotten information value out of this that's the whole point of this the wealthy contractor program is really to help provide you with tools and resources and strategies and tactics that you could use to grow your business get our you know our, this is not stuff that we're making up this is stuff that we've experienced ourselves um, as home improvement entrepreneurs for years and uh, we've been doing this since you know 2009 working with hundreds of companies just like yours and um, we know a couple of things and I think we can help you so um, just a few more few more seconds here just waiting on a few more people come on people there we go no doesn't bother me but I like the yeses yeses are great yes please book take advantage of the strategy session you get on the phone with either Jamie or Addy uh, both of them are, you know, they know your business, they understand your business, um, and they'll ask you some really good questions and um, probably challenge you in a couple of ways. But I'll tell you what, we haven't done one opportunity map where we have not found opportunity for you. 
um, and where there might be additional money um, uh, in your business. All right. All right, I'm going to close the poll here in just a second. Just a couple more clicks, clicks. All right, anybody have any questions? Questions. Um, Todd, um, what was the mapping website that you recommended at the knockout session? I don't remember um, if you just do a search for online mapping software, um, some some stuff will come up. Some stuff will come up. It should be something where you just take your um, your data in either a Excel or CSV file, upload it, and then it'll it'll just automatically map everything for you. Any other questions? Um, hi, Jana. Questions, 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 no questions. All right. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more, I mean, those of you that responded to the poll, which was most of you, um, we will be in contact with you very uh, soon. But for those of you that still want uh, maybe to learn a little bit more or want more information, let me see. I think I've got a, a URL that I can send you to. Give me just a second here. I'm looking it up. I'll put it into... I'll put it into the um, chat box. There's a link there that you can go check out. All right. So nobody's got any questions, huh? <laughs> hey, Jonna. All right, everybody. Well, look, again, I hope this has been uh, uh, valuable for you. Um, whatever we can do at G4 uh, to help you, there's our information there. Um, let us know. I mean, we'd be happy to uh, help you in any way that we can, even if it's, you know, if we're going to refer you to somebody else. I mean, whatever it is, uh, we are here to help. All right. I think that's it. No questions. Thank you, everybody. Have a great week. Have a great month. And um, I will be back with you in a couple weeks, I think, two, three weeks. So uh, look out for podcasts. We've got some amazing killer episodes coming up. Um, by the way, for those of you that are still on the line, I haven't said much about this, but you want to save the dates. February 7th and 8th. We're going to have Accelerate 2018. It's going to be happening right here in South Florida, February 7th and 8th. Save the dates because you are not going to want to miss Accelerate 2018. Save the dates. Put it on your calendar right now. You're going to get some information here in the next couple of weeks, but uh, you could hit a save the date right now. All right, everybody. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate you being part of the Wealthy Contractor community. And uh, I will talk to you all soon. Thanks. Bye.